Today I'm cutting in half Nick's vegetable tan leather boots and also gonna run some more super scientific tests on this leather so we can compare it to chrome tan leather. And this video is sponsored by Nick's. So if you want 10% off of any of their vegetable tan leather boots, not all their boots, just the vegetable tan leather ones, use the code ROSEANVILLE at checkout and the, co the code is good, <laughs> is good until the end of August. So I was supposed to announce the winners of the Air Force Ones on Saturday, but we're getting ready to move the shop so I haven't had as much time to film. So here are the winners of the Air Force Ones. And it'll be kind of a little sporadic with posting. I'll, I should do at least one video a week, but it might not be as regular until we get moved down to Salt Lake. So before we start ripping these apart, let's quickly go over what vegetable tan leather is. So there's basically two types of leather out there. There's chrome tan leather that uses chromium salts to turn flesh into leather. And then there's vegetable tan leather that is exactly what it sounds like. It uses tree bark and other uh, plant-based compounds to turn the flesh into leather. Pros and cons of each. Chrome tanned leather, it's a lot faster to produce. It can be made in a matter of days. So that brings the price down. So that's another big benefit of chrome tan leather. It's sometimes two to three times cheaper than a, than a vegetable tan leather. It's often a lot more flexible and pliable straight out of being tanned. And most leather out there, 80 to 90% of the leather produced is a chrome tanned leather. Compared to vegetable tan leather, because it uses natural compounds, and it's not as, uh, not as aggressive of an acid and a reaction, it takes months to produce instead of days. So because of that, the price is a lot higher. And then also the finished result of a vegetable tan leather is a lot stiffer than chrome tan. It can be made to be softer, but just generally uh, veg tan is gonna be a lot stiffer. So why do people like vegetable tan leather? A big reason people like it is it's, it's a more natural way of making leather and it doesn't have any harsh chemicals or acids in it. Like you would never wanna make a, a gun holster or a, sh a knife sheath out of chrome tan leather because those chromium salts will react with the metal. Versus a vegetable tan leather, there's nothing in there that's gonna react to metals or your skin and so you just have a more natural leather. Another big reason people like vegetable tan leather is how moldable it is and how strong it is. And maybe the biggest reason that people like vegetable tan leather is how well it ages. Over time, it starts to absorb the natural oils and um, conditioner and start shaping to your foot and really starts to develop a unique look that's 100% unique to how you're using your boots, where you're wearing them, what conditioner you're using, and uh, kind of tells a story of the product better than a chrome tan leather. You'll still get patina on a chrome tan leather. It just won't be as distinct and um, as good looking in my opinion. Does that mean that vegetable tan leather is better than chrome tan leather? Not necessarily. Um, a lot of people like it more. It's more expensive. And if you're looking for those certain characteristics, it's a better leather. But chrome tan leather also has some characteristics that make it better than uh, vegetable tan leather. Now let's get to the information on the boots. So the brand is NYX, the style is Robert, the color is the brown Wicked and Craig Veg Tan Leather. The price is $550 without the discount and they are made in Spokane, Washington, USA. So now let's get to cutting them in half. These are probably so far my, the boots I have least looked forward to cutting in half because I, I think these boots are so pretty, but we got to do it. I think I hit every single nail cutting through this, but let's see what's inside.
So these are built almost identically to their ultimate work boot, the Builder Pro. Um, so if you haven't seen this video, I have two videos that go a lot more in depth in the actual construction of these. Um, the one just got over a million views total. So that was really cool. So watch this video if you wanna see a full breakdown of how this is all built. But for this video, we'll just kind of go through the layers and identify what is what and why it's there. So starting with the heel and the outsole. So these are a Vibram V-bar outsole and then the heel is also Vibram. And then you've got the Oak Bark Tan leather heel stack. And I wish you guys could feel this in person because this feels like wood. Most people that see these shoes, they think that this heel is all wood because it's such a hard leather. And it's an oak bark tan leather, which is a, it's also vegetable tan leather, but it's a lot, it's a different process that makes a lot harder and stronger leather. Moving up from there, we've got the oak bark tan midsole. Above that, we've got the leather shank. Above that, we've got that little teeny wedge of arch support. Above that, we've got the leather insole. And above that, we've got a chrome tanned leather sock liner. And then moving up from there, if we go to the tongue, so this is a good example of where you'd want a chrome tan leather for a specific characteristic. So in the tongue, where this is gonna be folded and it's gonna be probably the biggest pain point in breaking these in, if you made this out of veg tan, the break-in period would be so much harder and so much longer because it would take so much longer to mold to your foot. Um, so using a chrome tan leather makes sense here in the tongue. And then if we go to the upper, so like I said earlier, this is a Wicked and Craig vegetable tan leather. This is their bridal leather. And this is actually the exact same leather I use in my wallets, just a little bit thicker. So this is six and a half to seven um, ounces. So what do I mean by bridal leather? It has nothing to do with brides or weddings, but a bridal is a piece of leather hardware that goes around the horse's head. And bridal leather was a leather designed specifically for horse tack forever ago. And it's such a good universal leather because it was designed for a horse to be constantly being pulled on in the weather and sweat. Um, and so it's just been a really popular leather ever since. But that's why Nick's chose bridal leather is because it's got all those properties and it was designed for hard, hard work because a lot of people think vegetable tan leather is kind of a weaker and more fragile leather, but bridal leather is some hardy, strong stuff. And as for the construction, so this is a stitch down construction just like the Builder Pro where this vamp, instead of being rolled underneath and having a welt sewn to it, it's flanged out and stitched to the sole. So this robber is, is basically the exact same boot as the Builder Pro, which is their, their heavy duty work boot just a little more tame. There's still a tons and tons of nails in here. There's still like the really heavy duty leather counter, just more, a more tame version, a more casual version of the Builder Pro. So now that we know what's inside of this boot and kind of how it's built, it's time to run our three tests and compare this veg tan leather to Nick's chrome tanned leather. And the three tests that we're gonna do is a puncture test, just like we did with the indestructible shoes. The next test is going to be a tear resistance test. And the third test is gonna be a water resistance or water, water absorption test. So let's start with the puncture test. Okay, we got our three swatches of each leather that we're going to clamp inside of this. This is a ring, uh, ring making kit for coins. We'll screw this on top. And that should apply equal pressure all the way around the outside of the leather so that when we put a super scientific nail in a board in there and, and lower the weight of this 48 pound dental lathe on top, that should let us know how many pounds it takes to force this nail through the leather. So let's give it a try. Next up is the veg tan leather. Okay. I think that worked. 
All right, now for the tear test. So I cut three swatches in this shape, if it'll focus, so that I can hook each of the quick links on the chain back here. Let me zoom in. So in theory, as I jack this up, it'll tell us how many pounds it's pulling up and tearing this apart because down here, I've got a chain hooked to the bottom of the engine crane that should kind of give us a stable point to pull from to give us a good reading. So up first, chrome tanned. Okay, now it's time for the veg tan. Let's give these the shot and see how they go. Okay, for the last test, I've just got a few swatches of this with a circle that I've kind of embossed into there so that when I put this on here, I can zero it out, add the same amount of water to that circle, take a measurement of it, let it sit for let's say three minutes, take it off, wipe the excess off, reweigh it, and that'll give us a calculation of how much water was absorbed into the leather. So let's do it. So it's the next day and I went through all the footage and got the results in, but you guys already know them by now because I've all put them back in the testing portion of the video. But to quickly go over them, veg tan is more puncture resistant, chrome tan is more tear resistant, and chrome tan is also more water resistant. No surprise there. And keep in mind that these results are far from conclusive or scientific because leather can vary pretty wildly from hide to hide or part of the hide from part of the hide. But I think it got us within the right ballpark and I did a couple things that I tried to make them as uh, consistent as possible. Like I, I skived all of the, the swatches down to the same thickness. I only took swatches from the shaft of the boot because NYX uses certain parts of the hide for certain parts of the boot for certain characteristics. So I think that kept it as consistent as I possibly could with my current setup. So what does it all mean and what can we glean from the information? So for veg tan, we know that it can be just as strong, if not stronger than chrome tan in a lot of ways. And then for chrome tan, we know the biggest difference is the waterproofness. So if you're wanting a pair of boots that you're gonna be using day in and day out in a wet and damp environment, chrome tan is the way to go. But if you're wanting a really long lasting boot that you're not gonna get, be getting wet every single day, we now know that veg tan is just as good of an option, whether it's for a work boot or a casual boot. And it's gonna age better and conform to your foot and mold to your foot better than any chrome tan boot out there. You know, there's a reason that people still use vegetable tan leather in saddles, in the soles of boots, on the insides of boots, and in leather products. Like I use, most of my leather products are made with veg tan for that reason. For me personally, the biggest benefit aside from the strength is how amazing veg tan ages. You know, leather is one of those things that's unique amongst other materials in that it only gets better with age and it actually takes a little bit of use to get to its peak performance. Whereas most materials start falling apart immediately after you start using it. 
And Veg Tan, it ages so much better than Chrome Tan in my opinion because I, because it's such a hard leather, it actually gets shinier with use than it came to you originally. And because it's not as waterproof, it absorbs your oils and the conditioner uh, more thoroughly so you get a lot more contrast and a, a lot more distinct patina over time. And so there's just a lot, and, and another one is, I get a little passionate about Veg Tan if you, if you can't tell. And on that note of loving Veg Tan too much, if you do order a pair of these boots from this video with my code, send me a photo of your, your order confirmation through the DMs on Instagram because I want to create an a Instagram message group or a group message or whatever it's called of everyone who buys these boots and wants to nerd out about how these boots break in and how they age and how they develop a patina over time so we can kind of, you guys can send me photos of what kind of boots you got and talk about how these age and geek out over it. Um, because these really are a pretty unique boot. There's not a lot of companies out there making vegetable tan boots and especially to this high of a quality. So if you are gonna buy a pair of these, don't forget to use the discount code ROSEANVIL for the 10% off and that code expires at the end of August. So thanks for everything you guys do. See ya.